This is Tabula Rasa reviewing another comic. We are grading off of these categories. If I like it, it gets a star. If I really like it, it gets a star plus. It's going to be out of 10. Five being I will recommend it to other people. And anything above five means I really like it. And anything below five, well, you get the idea. Now here we go with The Wicked and the Divine. Oh, yes. This was written by Kirian Gillen, the writer. The artist was Jamie McClivy. Matthew Wilson was the colorist. Clayton Cowles, the letterer. Hannah Donovan, the designer. Chrissy Williams was the editor. D. Caniff was the flatter. And Nathan Fairbin was the guest colorist on number four, PP12. And it was published by Image Comics. First category to review is color slash black and white, or how color, or if it's in black and white, how that's used. And I have to say, real big fan of color use in this. It fits the atmosphere, and you know, how do you say? Uh, nothing's really wasted, and when they don't have a background, you notice that it's not distracting. That it doesn't have a background, and overall, it does get a star. In fact, I would recommend a star plus on this. Character and dialogue. I would definitely give this a star plus for character and dialogue. I do like all the characters on here. Um, they're portrayed very well. The idea of them being gods and they only live for a couple years, but they also reincarnate is a nice way to put it and everyone has their own unique personality and none of it feels off from what we would superficially know about these characters at least from wikipedia and whatnot so it works pretty well and it does play around with it so again star plus next category is panels and expression through the panels uh, I have to say, as you can notice in this video, um, I'm viewing the panels individually. And here's the thing. If you look at each panel individually, as far as digital goes, each panel is a picture in of itself. But once you blow it up and see the entire page, I think it loses a little bit. All the panels are squares. There's not a lot of play to it. But because each panel, especially if you're looking at this digitally, you know, is good enough that it will continue to grab your attention. I don't know if it will do the same if you got it in the paperback form or a hardcover form, an actual physical form. But overall, I think it's good, not great. Everything's a box, essentially. So I give it a star. Usage was good. Next category, theme and execution. I have to say the theme of reincarnation, of destiny, of fate, as we can see in this first volume, was played very well, and they give it kind of the slow burn to it. Uh, we get introduced to characters, get to see a little bit about what they can do and maybe what their role is. I do think, though, maybe they jump the gun a little bit in its haste for revealing who the main baddie is. At least in this first volume, um, it was kind of unexpected, but then again, kind of not uh, just because of the way that the character was portrayed. Um, but overall, I think it was pretty good and does pique my interest as far as that goes. So I would give this category star plus. OK, now the plot. Um, we have ourselves in here a murder mystery and trying to find who the real killer is at least in the first volume and it kind of ties it together it does build it up um that being said the murder mystery part the mystery part there isn't quite as much there for a mystery story but as far as it relates to the plot i think it's going to play second because this may go on for a long time i'm not sure it was kind of a lengthy first volume so I would have to give this just a star. Uh, everything just, I don't know if it was the pacing or something, but overall, I just thought that the plot in itself, you know, it didn't really build for that mystery 
story that they were setting up. Uh, so overall, it is good, but you know, not super great. So star. So the Wicked and the Divine got a total of seven stars, which means it is firmly above in the good category. Definitely would recommend to someone if they are interested in that kind of story. Um, overall, I would have to say, would I want to continue reading this? Um, it kind of depends. I mean, this was free, so that kind of colors it if you had Comixology, which is not a sponsor, by the way. But if you have Comixology and you have this as part of their unlimited thing, uh, and yeah, why not? It's free, right? At least, you know, you're paying for a subscription, so it's great. Would I go out my way to buy it that is kind of a different question altogether i don't know if i would buy it per se but that's just due to my own personal taste as it's not really a objective reflection on the comic book itself it's just not really my speed that being said it is good it's fun <laughs> plays around with the tropes a little bit of gods so Again, it was enjoyable to read. I did enjoy reading this, and funny story, when I was actually trying to get the screen captures for all this, or screen recording, I actually, on my, um, I accidentally, for some reason, it did not record the first time, so I had to go through it all over again, and I had to read through it all over again. In fact, the first time was just the full panels, and the second time, because I kind of got into it, I did the close-up in which you can see. So, again, very fun book. Very good. Uh, if you're a parent and thinking, is this okay for my kids? Probably not. Depends. I would say high school age would be fine if you're comfortable with that. But anything below middle school kids, uh, no. So this has been Tabula Rasa reviewing The Wicked and the Divine. Hope you did enjoy this. Do the YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, and all that fun stuff. And until next time.